You may be familiar with an NPR podcast with my friend, Sam Sanders. It's called It's Been a Minute. Oh, thank you, Sam. Of course. This episode of Ron's Office Hours uh, could be called It's Been Half a Century. Fifty years ago was 1968, one of the most momentous years in modern American history. It's hard to overstate how much happened in just that one year and how much the aftershocks from some of those events are still with us in the present. Just past midnight on January 31st, in the war-torn country of Vietnam, some 70,000 troops of the Army of North Vietnam and the Viet Cong attacked the cities all around the southern part of the country and all of the major towns. For a period of hours, they actually held the U.S. Embassy in Saigon. The battle went on for weeks and was known as the Tet Offensive, recognizing the Vietnamese New Year of Tet. In the end, the U.S. and South Vietnamese forces drove the invaders back out, and the invaders suffered tremendous casualties. But the shock of seeing the communist enemy mount such an attack had a deep effect on the American public. Critics of the war were emboldened, and protests against the war grew larger and more frequent. On March 12th, with the Tet Offensive still reverberating, New Hampshire held its presidential primary. And although incumbent President Lyndon Johnson won, he got less than half the vote and barely finished ahead of the upstart peace candidate, Senator Eugene McCarthy of Minnesota. Four days later, another rival Democratic candidate rose to challenge President Johnson for the Democratic nomination. He was New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy, the brother of President John F. Kennedy, whose assassination in 1963 had made Lyndon Johnson president. On March 31st, Johnson made a stunning announcement. I shall not seek, and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Less than a week later, on April 4th, the civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was shot dead by a sniper in Memphis, Tennessee. Riots raged in more than a dozen cities across the United States, including in Washington, D.C., where days of destruction left parts of the city so damaged they took decades to recover. Two months to the day after King's death, Robert Kennedy, won the California presidential primary, and was gunned down minutes after giving his victory speech. He died hours later on June 5th. On August 28th, thousands of anti-war protesters tried to march outside the convention hall on Michigan Avenue. They were assaulted by Chicago police officers, many of them wielding nightsticks, sending many to the hospital. All of this was captured on television and the footage was shown all over the world. The Battle of Michigan Avenue would leave a bruise on democratic politics for more than a generation. Even the Olympics brought scenes of controversy in 1968. On October 16th, two American sprinters gave the Black Power salute on the medal awarding stand while the band played the Star Spangled Banner. That fall, the Democratic nominee for president was Johnson's vice president, Hubert Humphrey. Although trailing in the polls, he tried to unite the party and did succeed in closing the gap. But on November 5th, by less than 1% of the popular vote, Republican Richard Nixon was elected president of the United States. Re-elected in 1972, he resigned in disgrace after the Watergate scandal. But that's a topic for another. For now, I'm Ron Elving at NPR. Thanks for coming to my office hours. Thanks for listening. Talk soon. It's called It's Been a Minute. Well, this edition... (laughs) Thanks for coming to my office hours. Okay. 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 Sam Sanders, everybody. Okay.